Welcome to another edition of West Virginia Mountaineers Live, part of the Voice of College Football Network, and of course, hosted by the Ryan and Rush Show. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and the Ryan and Rush Show as well, of course, at the conclusion of this broadcast. And of course, the Wolfman goes live every day at four o'clock and after game days. Ryan, bye week this week, coming at the perfect time, especially with a little bit, not injury riddled, but uh, you know, there was a dirty player on TCU that gave us uh, a little bit of a hard time, but of course we get the last laugh and the West Virginia Mountaineers, your prediction, Ryan, you, you had a win yep. against Texas Tech and TCU. I at least said we were going to win in TCU. I uh, had us at three and two. You had them at four and one. I'm happy to be wrong, Ryan. I'm happy you're right. That's why your name's ahead of mine. Hey, <laughs> good, good job. Mountaineers. We're four and one baby chat. Let, let's hear from you guys. I, it's, it's a great time to to be a Mountaineer fan, a time that's been much needed, a time that to see Neil Brown doing what he's doing. And here's the thing is we talked about it before this season. We've talked about it every every week, Ryan, is this team is – they, they have their identity, but they're not trying to force things, right? We've seen that in the past where Neil Brown maybe has a game plan going into things, and we got to stick to the game plan. we got to stick to the game plan. But this year we're seeing a team that – we know our identity, our, our best units, our offensive line, our running backs. You know, we have two mobile quarterbacks. So what should we do? Run the ball, not force screens, not force stupid passes. Just run the ball. And, and we're seeing it. And we're seeing teams like come and play to our level and try to out manhandle us. And it's just not working. We have a defense that's flying around. Hey, and we have going back to the Neil Brown thing and not forcing things. He's making adjustments. They, you know, TCU mm -hmm. got up to a seven nothing lead. We answered right back. We saw it in the Texas Tech game, right? With, uh, what was it? Texas Tech went Morton went down and, and scored, and Nico answered right away. This is a team that's not necessarily freaking out right away. Or hey, we're down. Uh oh, we're down. We can't be down. It's no, okay, we're down. Why are we down? Okay, this happened there. This happened there. Let's make these adjustments. And they're making adjustments. They're answering it on offense, and they're not panicking. This is. This is great to see. This is, of course, what we expected from Neil Brown. We've been waiting, what, five years for this? And, hey, uh, they say patience is a virtue, and, and we're seeing it, Ryan. What, what are your thoughts so far, brother? Uh, great coaching so far. And you mentioned it, the adjustments at halftime. They've given up 10 points in three games in the second half. TCU, Texas Tech, and Pitt just completely put the clamps down, shut them out, won the game. The defense was phenomenal once again. On Saturday, pitching a shutout at TCU. Um, yeah, I mean, off the charts defensive effort. Like you said, the bye comes at a perfect time because we are shorthanded. And I mean, we've won these games in different ways against Pitt. It was kind of just don't don't uh, play not to lose because we knew Jerkovic was going to throw us the ball, and he did. Uh, T Texas Tech, we had to throw it a little more because they really were stacking the box. Nico made some big plays. And then uh, Saturday, the defense wins the game. Garrett makes a couple of big plays. And, of course, uh, nobody really realized that Nico was basically unavailable on Saturday. His ankle was injured as well. So it kind of was one of the weirder game plans that we almost had to play our third-string quarterback. But thank God Garrett Green was available because we needed him uh, down the stretch there. And that in, the, in an environment like that to get a big road win over last year's national runner-up. And, yes, Mountain Man in the chat. Four and one, baby. Let's go. It's a great night to be a Mountaineer. Uh, Jackson Johnson in the chat. What's up, um, Jackson? But uh, bye week comes at a perfect time, though. Mm -hmm. So I hey, let's get some guys healthy. So, yeah, let's talk about this. Ever since the, the Penn State loss, right? Let's just talk second yep. half. You brought it up. Duquesne scored a touchdown. Pitt hasn't scored. Texas Tech scored a touchdown. And then TCU didn't score. In four games, they've given up. 14 points, and that's only been split between two games. Is these second half adjustments have been incredible? It's been great. And hey, you brought up uh, we still like to call him good old Jerkovic. It's probably Jerkovic, but hey, it's it's fun to mess with him. He's not the starter at Pitt anymore. So we're having a lot of fun over there. And the enemies up north, they're they're one and four. And hey, I looked at their schedule. I don't know if they're getting a win anytime soon, Ryan. It, it's it's they're, yeah. they're, hey, it's it's good. Dark man. days for them. Can't, good. Couldn't happen to a nicer bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, yep, yeah, yeah, no, no front runners to spit fans, right? The good old oh, humble no. people. But anyway, Ryan, is it what this team is? is it's it's 
we haven't seen hope like this in Morgantown in a while. Hell, it might be even since before the pandemic, after mm-hmm. that that uh, Baylor basketball game where we were feeling like going in the tournament. But in terms of this level of optimism, like, wow, we could we could make a run at, at Dallas because I mean the schedule we we've we've gotten over the hard part of our schedule. Then you know Houston's going to be a tough game next week, and not because it's Houston. Obviously, that's that's our old head coach and. We know Dana, when he, he gets fixated on something, he's like, I'm going to win that. So obviously we're going to get the best from Dana, but the three biggest remain games that remain for West Virginia is right at Houston, mm-hmm. at UCF and at Oklahoma. And of course at Oklahoma is probably going to be the hardest one, you know, but at Baylor is at the end of the season in Waco, you know, who knows what the deal is with Baylor. Great comeback win last week, but who, if it, are they going to be playing for anything by that time? I mean, Iran to seat keeps getting hotter and hotter and then, you know, keep winning the home games. So yeah. I four and one at this point. And, you know, of course, take it week by week. We're kind of in the bye week, right? We're having fun looking at the remainder of the schedule week by week, but tell you what, you get that win at Houston on Thursday night. Cause you come off a of bye week. So what? And then you get, because that game's a Thursday night, in a way, you kind of have like a shortened bye week on the back end. Yep. So for Oklahoma State and Gundy, and historically, that, that, that's been a tough game. We finally got him at Oklahoma State last year, but who knows what's going on with Oklahoma State? Seriously, like we, yeah. we trust Gundy, but they don't have a quarterback. Yeah, and 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 you mentioned it. The, the most important game is out of the bye week, and I know everybody's super excited right now. That's going to be a hard game. I, I keep saying it. Everybody that watches us over at the Ryan and Russ show, that line's probably going to be around three or four points. It, it, mm-hmm. It's I know Houston's in last place, but this we're not a team that's going to blow you out. We're a team that's going to outgrind you. So and it, I would love to blow out Houston, but it's just not going to happen. It's going to have to be the same formula as Texas Tech, TCU, and Pitt, outgrind you, and hopefully um, – basically choke you out and win the game. So, and you guys know Dana. Dana's pulled multiple upsets here um, when he was a home underdog in Morgantown. Mm-hmm. Same situation for him in Houston coming up. And it's his Super Bowl, and his job is potentially on the line. So, that, like you said, Rush, the most important game is this Houston game. It's really important, imperative for that staff and those players not to get too high. They've done a great job of taking on the next challenge. We had to beat Pitt. Um because we owed them one from last year when we threw the pick six. Then we had to beat Texas Tech because they had beat us four straight times under Neil. And then we owed TCU one from last year. So there's got to be some motivation, hopefully with the Neil Dana angle for this upcoming game. But this is not a time to relax and say, oh, we're just, we're four and one. We're going to go into Houston and beat those guys. They're going to have to play well again. So I think an advantage too to this, and and we'll rewind here in a second and kind of talk more what's what's gotten up to this point, and then we'll look out more. I know we're doing a little bit of everything right now, but with this coming up on on this point that you were saying, with this coming up against Houston and it being a Thursday night game, right? Neil Brown was talking about how it's not really a true bye week either. Like sometimes you have those bye weeks, kids are able to go home, right? See their families, yeah. catch up with friends. Um, you know, maybe couple days without practice I'm, I'm sure they'll still have a couple days without practice but i think that's a good thing I, I know sometimes it's good like hey they need to go home clear their heads but i think because of how focused this team has to be especially technically on paper we may not have the best personnel out there there are other teams personnel might be better i mean just yeah. look at who we've played so far i think the fact that they need to stay in morgantown and, and kind of still report to the facilities, even though they've been their bye week. I think, I think that's a good thing in this case. I think it limits distractions. It, it keeps guys focused. They're stable, able to heal up from injuries, but you, there's concerns, right? We've seen it in hell. We've seen it in the NFL before, but we've seen it in college football. Sometimes these players go home and they go home to areas where it wasn't the greatest upbringing and they get in trouble again. And then obviously that creates distractions and then we're out with more players and, you know, the whole domino effect. Right. Um, and I, I think, I think them not having a true buy is actually going to make a positive difference and maybe the difference in us beating Houston rather than it being, if it was a normal uh, Saturday game, 
us beating Houston. And then going back to what I said earlier is now, okay, you got kind of not the full buy, but you play on a Thursday, but then you get an extended rest for Oklahoma state coming back at home. So yeah, you get more rest can heal up more. And then, Hey, you play an Oklahoma state team that you should win as well. And so I think the way the schedule is set up, not only the opponent schedule, but the timings of those games is very beneficial for West Virginia. Agreed. And uh, I think they, they reported back today. So Neil gave mm-hmm. him off Monday and Tuesday, stay away, get your body right. Yeah. And basically just be a student for a couple of days. And then you're back here. Uh, Cause they're basically today is equivalent to Friday, the week before. And then tomorrow we'll basically start the new week headed into next Thursday. And then they'll have a travel day uh, a week from now before they take on the Houston Cougars. Um, but yeah, no, I like, I like the buy that the Big 12 has done with on the front end because it's basically you get you basically sandwich the game in between a uh, two week span. So you get what, 10 days off or 11 days off on the front end, then nine days off on the back mm-hmm. end. So some additional rest for these teams that play weeknight games. Yeah, it ends up being like three weeks, two games. Yeah, but, it's, but it's a nice there's the positioning of it. Yeah, it is. It's a break on and both sides. And it's at the middle point of the year. We're five games in. Of course. We got seven to go, so the middle game is uh, the the bye week. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it works out well. All right, Ryan. Before we, you know, we we've kind of talked about both sides of it. Let, let's let's rewind it back a little bit, right? Yeah. Is we started with Penn State, and now we're seeing how good Penn State is. Is this this might be this might be we've had uh, we had him on our podcast. Uh, I think it was Jake, uh, the Penn State guy who used to live yep. in Morgantown. He say that this kind of feels like it's Penn State's year. And with that being said, and we, we've talked about this over and over again, the score was not an indication of how that game really went. Um, and how good we played there is every, obviously every win and every week that passes and we're seeing what Penn State does, that loss is looking better and better. Like we were, we, we didn't feel amazing after the game. But now knowing what we did now, I'm like, dang, that actually ended up really being a moral victory that that we needed. And then, of course, we had the Duquesne game, and there was something about that lightning storm. I felt it, Ryan. I, f- I felt the electricity in the air that, you know, a little, little slow to start. The lightning hit. West Virginia came out uh, firing. Of course, that was the Clement game. Got him on scholarship. Realized we have another receiver that we can work with. And then, obviously, you've got the pit monkey off our back. We got the, the first Big 12 monkey off our back we got the road win off our back by the way quick side note the fact that we're not in the top 25 right now is ridiculous but maybe we'll get that <laughs> bye week win yeah. where a couple of the teams lose and we'll, we'll we'll sneak up into there but it's we're getting to this point where you know we've talked about it the checklist right of everything we need to do and and it's happening and it's the the resiliency of this team to just not be so I'm going to even say emotional, and I don't even know if that's the right term, but the that they're not getting going from the in game into the out of game step is they're not letting. Okay, they scored on us. Let's go back out and score again. It, they're they're reacting very well and not getting seized by the moment. Where we've said before with Neil Brown, hey, like just just feel the moment. Don't you don't have to always stick to the game plan. You know, going back to the whole pit fourth and an inch. Feel it. What's going on in this game? And I think he's really done that. They, the, the, and, and it's been this kind of trickle down effect where the players are doing it as well. Now, kind of going back to this TCU game here is TCU was playing dirty. This was at TCU. This was this was a game that, you know, you're playing not only TCU, but they're in a situation where they're in the national runner ups. I mean, this is a game where you can feel small in the moment where you can shrink. And another unit of the field, too, I want to bring up. Obviously, we talked about the defense flying around. Offense, you know, doing what they need to do, feeding into their talents and and getting points that way. But I got to give a shout out to the special teams as well, because that was a little bit of a concern going into this. But you have two missed field goals, blocks in there, and just going out and attacking. I mean, it's it's been a lot cleaner. It seemed like with punt returns, kickoff returns, they're getting a little better every week. It's... This this is a team that's playing well. It's contagious, right? They're playing well all the way around. And that's really what just sticks out to me the most is, hey, you look on paper, right? We might we may not have from top to bottom the best individuals on the team. Mm-hmm. 
but we got a cohesive team that works together. We got, we don't have the best people, but we have the right people. And that's what you need. Yeah. And they dealt with some serious adversity in this game. Uh, first off, TCU scores right off the bat. And it's like, oh, man, is it going to be one of them nights where they're just going to run away from us? But obviously, it was not going to be. But I mean, you mentioned it. Lathan goes down. You know, he's out for the year. That's hard. That's hard sometimes. Teams don't react well when they lose one of their brothers that go down and you know they're out for the year. You see them crying. Uh, Aubrey Burks, I mean, that was a scary injury as well. Uh, multiple offensive linemen uh, poked in the eye. Uh, I mean, multiple guys on the left side banged up. Uh, Milam and, and Remax, so hopefully we get them back ASAP. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there was adversity, injury after injury. And then for them to hold – the leading rusher in the big 12, Amani Bailey, who was averaging like 200 yards a, a game to 50 yards, 50 yards for the game, 2.9 yards a carry. That's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it was fantastic. I mean, they really, the, both games. I mean, well, I guess you can say the same thing about Dracovic is what I really like that the defense is doing, not only flying around and wherever the ball is, it seems like someone's there to do it is, we're really getting after the quarterback and that was kind of a, it just didn't feel like we got after him last year, or it's been a real while since our presence was felt by the, the, the quarterback. And I mean, another reason for this is right. Is talking about the right people is it seems like every game it's like, okay, it's your turn to step up. Okay. It's your turn to step up. It's everyone's kind of knows it's like, and, and it's also the, Hey, who's playing well, who's not playing well, who's feeling it, who's not feeling it. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're just feeding into that. So it, it's great to see, especially th this win over TCU, because I mean, historically we've done well against them. We've done well in Fort Worth that game last year, just that game after that game last year, I know how you felt about it, Ryan, but I definitely was like, Neil Brown, you got to get out of your own way. Like we could have been the team to keep them from going to the national championship. Now I'm glad the big 12 was represented in the national championship, but you know, I, I want to be their one loss, not Kansas state. Right. So no doubt. It, so it, it's just good. It, it, it's good to see that they're living up to the moment and the moment's not taking them, I guess, from a psychology standpoint. And I just, I'm really impressed by I mean, I'll say it, every unit of this team. Of course, we know the units that are best, offensive line, the running backs, you know, the – the. I mean, hell, I mean, actually, I mean, I think every unit's playing very decent. And, of course, talking about it too is uh, someone we haven't talked about yet, which is long overdue, is Garrett Green. Yeah, that guy yeah. is – that guy Gamer. Is, is a baller. That guy yeah. is a dog. That guy is a leader. That guy is just – when he is just yelling at the faces of like three or four like defensive linemen, just being like, I'll go with any one of you now. It's like, dang, it really is true what they say. It's, 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 what is it? It's not the size of the dog. It's the fight in the dog or, you know, I'm sure I'm messing that up right now, but man, it's, and I think what was great about that situation, because a, a concern of ours, something we talked about last week, Ryan is with Nico just being kind of younger and inexperienced. And you know, the, we found out kind of the injury stuff a little later, is you great job here at home stepped up against Pitt, stepped up against texas tech did his job but sometimes when those younger and experienced quarterbacks go on the road they yep. can shrink in that moment so i think this was a great game to have garrett green back for and i'm glad i'm glad he came back for it i'm glad they didn't wait till the po the post by to bring him back and it it showed it i i i i just for you know 14th in the big 12 14th best coach 14th Best quarterback. All right. I guess 14s are a lucky <laughs> number because yeah. that guy is not the worst quarterback in the Big 12. Not even close. He was the best player on the field. I mean, he had almost almost a hundred yards on the ground with the with the bum ankle. I mean, the guy's the guy's unbelievable. He makes plays happen. I felt as soon as I watched him the first snap, I, I think I said to you, I said, he's he, he's ready to go, man. I I I I'm confident that we're gonna find a way to get this thing done because we got him under center. Um this bye week's going to be huge for him. And he just ha he has so much composure, and he just makes every competitive play. C.J. Donaldson didn't have a good game either again, which 
Yeah. Kind of go. He's, he's, I think he's I a little banged he's, up. I think he is too. And I think he's also got some other things going on. But I mean, Jaheim White stepped up, the freshman. He had a, he had a couple of big runs, five carries, 46 yards. They got to get him more involved in the offense I to, agree. to spell. Cause remember, CJ has not done it for a whole year yet. He, he broke his, he broke his leg around at the end of this month at this point last year. Yeah. So I think it was a TCU game. So, they got they got to get some other guys involved to take a little bit of the workload off him. But I think Donaldson will finish strong. I I just think this team's going to keep getting better and better because of their ability to control the line of scrimmage and run the football. TCU's good, man. I like I know they lost a bunch of pieces, but they had been absolutely rolling since that Colorado game, and they've been running the ball down everybody's throat, and they couldn't get anything going in the second half against the Mountaineers. No, going back to the whole second half adjustment. I mean, Sonny Dykes, obviously, that's a great coach. Fantastic coach. And Neil Brown outcoached him. We yeah. saw it. That that not only was our player, like, he was outcoached by Neil Brown. So, hey, good for Neil Brown. Like we said, we had our concerns about it. I mean, the whole, it wasn't just us. The whole fan base had concerns with, with Neil Brown. But it, it thank you for pro- proving us wrong. That's what we want. Because at the end of the day, what do we want? We want West Virginia to win. And we want him to win, and we want him to do well, and we want to be that team that we saw in the Don Nealon days, the Rich Rod, the, the team we know that we're capable of being. And hey, I don't, I don't care who's the coach, I just want to win. And hey, hundred percent, yeah. Yes. And it's kind of been weird the people cheering against Neil Brown because it's like, what if he does strike at the right time? Because he's a great recruiter, recruiter. He starts figuring out this coaching thing and gets, starts getting even better recruits here. We we can return. Uh, and I'm all for it. Like I said, no, who cares who's doing it as long as we win. So it's interesting. So we, Hey, anyone out there watching live right now, we'd love it to see in the chat, uh, what you're most surprised about. I guess it could be good or bad, but Hey, it's been really yeah. good lately. So, uh, yes, post it, it up there, but Ryan, um, let's, let's start talking about kind of a little bit of the schedule here and yeah. then we can whip around the big 12 a little bit. Uh, and, and obviously it's a bye week, so we got to start scouting the opponent, scouting the rest of the Big 12. We do have a uh, Red River coming up this week. Um, we talked about it. So obviously we have the half bye, and we got Houston next week, and then another half bye, Oklahoma State. And then, you know, it gets a little tricky. We're at UCF, then BYU. What is it? And then it's o- at Oklahoma. At Oklahoma. Cincinnati. Yeah. Yep. And then, and at, then Baylor. at Baylor. So, so, it, so it's, it's one back to back to back, like yeah. every other one. Yeah. yeah. So it's so, easy to remember. Yeah. So yeah. with those opponents remaining, I guess we love doing floor to ceilings, right? Yeah. What's your, and of course, realistic. I mean, obviously the floor could be zero, you know, that what we'll do, we'll do two versions of it. What is your devil's advocate version, the kind of devil on your shoulder telling you? And then what's your like, angel on your shoulder telling you so what three home games left uh yes. three home games you're going to be favored in so three i mean oklahoma state byu cincinnati those are all games you should win Could at be. home with what we've yeah. seen let's say we drop one of those a bad game maybe gundy gets us we'll, we'll okay. say that or, or 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 something weird happens against byu so no, one of those you. home games yeah this <laughs> we're talking this is worst case scenario. yeah yeah, yeah. And then let's say you only win one road game. Okay. So that, uh, that would get us to what? So I, I think worst case, seven and five. Seven and five with. No, it would yeah. be because you said two and one and one and two. So that'd be three and three. And we have one loss. Wouldn't that be eight and four? No, we're four and one. Why can't oh, I do basic yeah. math right now? We have four road games left. We have Houston. Four. That's right. We're yeah. already we're already past yeah. Houston. We're right talking. Right. We're we're talking worst case. We lose to Houston, and then we only win one more road game. So two and two on the road. So that puts us at seven and five, and that'll that that would put us out of Big Twelve because yeah. Um. So best case scenario, ten and two. I think. I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're gonna run the table. Like I, that's I, hard. I, that's hard. Like you know. We've had some really, really good teams. I mean, you think about Pat White, Steve Sladen. They never ran the table. Like So you're it, saying 10 and 2. So that's only one Big 12 loss. Yes, as the best case. Best case. So that's your range. Yeah. So, okay. Wow. 10 and that would oh yeah. We'll definitely be in. If we only have one loss, we're going to the Big 12 champion. Well, I think if we have two losses. So I'm a little more conservative. 
Um, but I think all situations, I definitely think the ceiling is the Big 12 championship. My yeah. guess is we go on the road, right? So we have four home games left. We have three home games left. Excuse me, four away games left and three home games. So four, we'll do three and one on the road. Ooh, that's going to be tough. Yeah. Yeah. You're, this you is can, your best case. It's 10 and yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, best in case. So yeah. three and one. And then you go, yep. Yeah. Uh, I'll say, I'll say two and there. I think there's two losses in there. I do. I'll say yeah. two and one at home. I eh, go undefeated at home. That'd be great. So either have to go three and zero oh at home, or uh, and it gives you flexibility to go two and two on the road. I'm telling you. So I guess what we're saying, we're both saying that either one Big Twelve lost, win the home game, split the road games. I like that. That's a that's what I think will that. happen. So I think nine and three is going to happen. And that's that's Big yeah. Twelve championship. You can't tell me I, a two loss team. Yeah. Isn't the, going to the Big 12 championship. The only way it doesn't happen is if Texas somehow gets away from everybody and we lose at Oklahoma and they have two losses and we have two losses and they win the tiebreaker. That's the only way it would not get in. Yeah. That but yeah. I, I mean somebody's got to lose the Texas Oklahoma game on Saturday, too. Exactly. So there's already one loss right there. Yes. Yeah. So I'm I'm saying I this is what I think it comes down to, right? I guess we both kind of been saying this is I think if you have two losses in the Big Twelve, you're you're most likely in. Like yes, and I ninety percent. I think I think the second place team or the two seed is going to have three loss. I think it's going to come down to three loss tiebreaker. I agree. I, I, I really agree. do. It's oh, I I could see them being the one seed. I'm not going to lie. Like with the way that the schedule shake and our schedule is perfect. Hard, with how much harder Texas and Oklahoma schedules are, I know we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but that's it's a bye week. on the bye week. Yeah, bye week I, we fantasize, we have fun. Yeah, I, I think if you're, I think if you're looking at the schedules, it's going to be hard for Oklahoma and Texas to to run through this thing. They they're going to get everybody's best oh, yeah. shot in the final year in the Big Twelve. They have to both play each other, so somebody's going to lose. They uh, both got to play Kansas State. Uh, Oklahoma's got to play us. Uh, Texas has also got to play in Houston. They got to play at Iowa State, at TCU. I mean, places that they have not had success recently. And then Oklahoma's got to go to BYU too. Ugh. On Senior Day, yeah, on Senior yeah. Day. I mean, they They're got some hard them. spots. I I think BYU's two and zero all time against Oklahoma as well. They won yeah. that opening game against Sam Bra. I guess he got injured for um. Uh, was it Landry Jones came in that game? The old Steelers yeah. quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it would have been, been funny if we had not drawn Oklahoma either in the schedule. If we had not got Texas or Oklahoma or K State. I was thinking that about really, that. that. What that if really we got Iowa something. State after the gambling <laughs> yeah. stuff? With <laughs> no, but no. hey, you can't ask for it all. But I'll play yeah. them in Norman. I'm down yeah. to beat them there last year in the Big Twelve as well in Norman. Hey, this could be the even out game, right? When Garrett Green was supposed yeah. to start last time in Norman, that was. You know, one bad, not offensive stat away from us winning that game. Now's the time to even it out. Well, and how, who, who has really given Oklahoma trouble over the last four to five years? They, they've kicked their ass every time they've played Kansas yeah. State because they yeah. just run the ball right down their throat and control the tempo and clock. Well, I think we can do that. And I think that's why we beat Oklahoma last year because we were able to control the clock, run the football, and Garrett Green made some plays. So, I do think we have the blueprint to bother those two um, more talented rosters in Texas and Oklahoma whenever we get there. Mm -hmm. Well, and don't forget, I mean, Oklahoma and Texas are going to have a target on their backs. I mean, your mark, oh, yeah. what we kind of thought was going to be the winner of Texas Tech, Texas, which I guess technically yeah. can still happen, um, was probably going to go to the Big 12 championship. You know, that game is prime time. Your mark even called it out. But do you know what that might end up being? Maybe that's the reason Texas doesn't make the Big 12 championship. Maybe we get a little yeah. Texas Tech upset in there as well. And, and, and Rush, I, I think also we just saw it with, I mean, I know Colorado has their holes. But when you play a Super Bowl after a Super Bowl after a Super Bowl, you finally start to wear down. I think that's what Texas and Oklahoma are going to get at the back end, the mm -hmm. Big 12 fatigue of getting everybody's best shot. Um because everybody, everybody's going to want to beat them one last time. So it, I, I think – and I think we're going to see it in the Pac-12 as well when all those teams, Oregon, Washington, USC, uh, Oregon State, Washington State, that are all really good, 
I think they're all just going to uh, knock each other out of the playoff for the Pac-12. Yeah, the Pac-12 Utah, is obviously yeah. – yeah, it's – it's. hey, it's – I'm excited to get those other teams next year. I mean, hey, we'll got plenty yep. to talk about next year when that, that happens. Conference realignment, the gift that just keeps on giving, especially for content. Um, yep. But we'll stick with this year, and we'll stick with uh, this conference, Ryan, kind of do a round – the Big 12. I know we had it. We did a little bit of the Big 12 show earlier on the Ryan and Rush show. Of course, go check that out and don't forget to subscribe to the Ryan and Rush show. Um, what year? We kind of tiered it out, but we can we can rank them a little bit. What teams? I guess we'll we'll kind of do the basement, the middle floor, the top floor, right? Basement teams. I think we're in agreement, right? It's 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 Houston and Cincinnati. Yeah, but it, like, and we talked about today on our show, the Ryan and Russ show. Those teams have talented quarterbacks and experienced coaches that can pick you off for a game. So if you're sleepwalking, they can get you and be a thorn in your side. I wouldn't. Know, well, I guess Emory Jones is a talented quarterback, but I yeah. would also say he can be a thorn in his own side. Yeah. It's amazing the yard Cincinnati's putting up. I, I mean, know. that's like it's incredible. Like. They, 14 or uh they lost by four was it 20 to six against oklahoma if they had a somewhat competent quarterback i mean they've they, already won that game they had over 500 yards against <laughs> miami of ohio somehow lost that game they had like 400 yards against oklahoma only had six points and they probably should have beat yu if he just doesn't throw a pick six i mean yeah. they're, they're like you said that's what i'm saying like from an offensive standpoint yeah. if they just don't turn the ball over they're actually pretty talented and then Houston too, Donovan Smith. Yeah. Hey, I think he uh, lights it up. Hey, Texas Tech was good last year. I'm, they might be missing him a little bit too. So, yep. oh, you know, we got to watch where I'm coming up. So, kind of the the what do we think? Kind of that middle floor, uh, Iowa State, because you never know. Even with the whole gambling stuff, I mean, Matt Campbell's still Matt Campbell, and those guys are playing for him. I thought, I thought there were concerns out there that they would just kind of lay down. Uh, this year and they're they're clearly not doing that um Baylor I I think okay so we talked about this, is I think the winner of Baylor Texas Tech will kind of start getting themselves back in the mix the loser is kind of they're just kind of done uh, it, it's uh, tough yeah yeah no I mean it's gonna be hard when you get two losses by the first weekend in October, we're talking about two losses get you in. Well, if you have two losses in October, that means you got to run the table the rest of the way. So, yeah, it's kind of an elimination game in a way this weekend. Well, plus both of them have two non-con uh, losses, especially Baylor's to Texas State. Yeah. I mean, that's that, tough. That's the one that it will and, – and, and the, the ironic thing is they both probably – they should have beat Utah with their backup quarterback. And – Texas Tech should have beat Oregon. So, I mean, that's what's crazy about these two teams is they've been mirror images of one another, underperforming, but they really should have they, – they got caught looking ahead to the big game, but they really should have won the big game too. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll also put middle floor UCF in there. That's the most fraudulent 0-2 when you don't have yeah. your star quarterback and you're still competing. I mean, they should have beat Baylor, but, hey, good for Baylor to come back and give themselves a shot. Maybe that is the thing that kind of excels Baylor uh, moving forward. And then I'll give it to BYU as well. I mean, here's the thing about BYU that even with Jalen Daniels in the game, I know Kansas wasn't in. We'll talk about Kansas here in a second. I know, but they were at Kansas. Jalen Daniels was the quarterback. Yeah, West Virginia fans may not like this. But Keaton Slovis had the game of his life. I mean, he looked incredible out there. He's BYU been good. doesn't. He's been fantastic. BYU yeah. doesn't turn the ball over three times, and I don't know gets more than what ten yards of rushing or whatever the ridiculous number yeah. is. They win that game. And that, that game, that was not a two-possession game. I know they covered it by 11 points, but BYU was the completely right side of that. And, and I, I think we honestly should put UCF and Kansas in its own category because of the <laughs> because they have two of the top five quarterbacks. They would be in the top four or five in the league when they're healthy, but right now they're not. Right now they're not healthy. The rumor is Plumlee might return this weekend against Kansas. But so made Daniel. So it's kind of <laughs> near images of That's one it. another. And I think, it, I mean, if they have just the quarterback, they can compete for the league. But I, I don't think you can trust either one right now. And they both have really good coaches. Yeah. I, that, that's going to be, I, I hope they both play. I really, yeah, I really shootout. enjoy. Yeah. I really enjoy, man, Plumley. That's a great quarterback. I mean, obviously, he's Daniels really good too. Man. But like, 
I remember watching, I mean, the, what was it? The first Thursday night game to start this season against Kent state. And I know it's Kent state, but man, what he was doing, I'm like, wow, this guy, you is saw it legit. at Boise before he got hurt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, he found, that's a hard place to win at. And they were, they were able to go up there and, and beat, beat the Broncos. That was a big win. And then he got hurt. So from two teams that need a, just their quarterback to be healthy and they'll take off to a team that needs a quarterback to step up Oklahoma state. Uh, yeah. here's the thing Gundy, right? We all know since 07, he hasn't had a losing season. He's been in a bowl. He's just an incredible coach. I loved a couple weeks ago when that old clip of him is to take it out on me, not my players. And then the press gives him a Gundy's the man. I, yeah. I love Gundy. I don't love what he's done to West Virginia, but I love, I, oh man, Mike Gundy, man. He, he's great. But Oklahoma state's that team that Gundy's a hell of a coach and can coach him up. But if they can't, I guess from another Gundy who's in the quarterback room, if they can't figure out the the quarterback situation is this team can sink fast. Cause it's, I mean, that South Alabama game was, whew. we're, we're going to know Friday night, what's going to happen to Oklahoma state the rest of the year. Cause they had a buy, yeah. they looked better. And in the usual year, Gundy's going to get them better over the bye week. If they don't look any better then they're, they're dead. I mean, they're not going to get any better and they get K state coming to, coming to town. So no, no time to feel sorry for yourself, man. You, if, if you got to find a way to get that game, I know you're an 11 point underdog, but they've dug themselves a hole losing at Iowa state, losing to South Alabama. Uh, that Gundy streak is in jeopardy. If, if, if they is. don't show life on Friday. So listen to this, Ryan, too. Obviously, they have Kansas State Friday night. Then they have the week before they play us, they have Kansas. And that's a Saturday game, too. At least we're playing on Thursday. Yeah. And then they have us and then Cincinnati. So That's a revenge game because Kansas ran it up on them last year when they had all those injuries. Yeah. And I, I like yeah. how it's Kansas State, Kansas, then us. I mean, that we're in a – see, add, add to the West Virginia schedule and us being in a good position. Play Oklahoma State at a great time to play them as well. So I guess that would kind of be our, our middle tier. I guess our middle tier, our middle level of this house, you know, we'll, we'll have our UCF and Kansas room kind of off to the side. Um, going to the top tier. Obviously, we'll start with the three 2-0 and o teams and the other undefeated team. Uh, we have Texas and OU. Oh, hey, I'll tell you what. Because we have, people, if, because we have a bye week um, coming up this week is, well, I guess the other team will have a win, but yeah. Hey, we'll be we'll for sure be number two in the league. Well, I guess if Kansas State yeah. wins, we'll at least yeah. be tied for number two. We will at worst be one of three unbeatens after so, headed into Houston. Potentially one of two if Gundy can pull off a miracle. I wish Texas uh, and true. Oklahoma could both lose. That'd be great. Uh, there you go. They need to go. They need to go to like a two point conversion off that goes to like fifteen overtimes, and their bodies are so beaten by the end of it. Play even soccer. If tech, yeah, go play <laughs> soccer. Right. Uh, obviously, West Virginia got to put them in the top tier, man. We're happy Earned about it. this team. Absolutely yeah. love the brand of football. Grinding it out. Love the schedule. Love the schedule, Ryan. Love it. So, and then of course, K State. Uh, that Missouri loss isn't looking too bad for them. Uh, obviously, they had the Tulane loss last year, and we saw how good Tulane is. Missouri's 5-0. And, yeah. you know, Howard got hurt a bit. Another quarterback that needs to be available if Kansas State's going to be good. They may have need to have a side room as well. Uh, but this, you're right. This Oklahoma State-Kansas State this week is going to be huge. And then I feel like I'm missing it. Oh, Kansas. Uh, yeah. Well, Kansas is kind of that middle tier we were talking yeah. about. So it's... It all gets back to the one big question, Ryan. Do you have an available quarterback that's willing to go? And if you don't have available quarterback, do you have that next guy that's willing to step up? Up, West Virginia checks those boxes. Yep, and and, and so I think we both agree that Texas and Oklahoma are one two. If you had to rank everybody, you have to. five five and zero. Oh, but you can nitpick both of those. Texas of has not. Texas has played three straight backup quarterbacks. The best quarterback they've played is Jalen Milrow, who's not very good at Alabama. So they're going to play their best quarterback on Saturday in Dylan Gabriel. On the other side, Oklahoma has played Cupcake City on the schedule. Um, their non-con was extremely soft with Arkansas State and Tulsa, two of the bottom ten teams in the country. Struggled at Cincinnati. Kind of were fortunate that Emory Jones self-destructed. And then they played Iowa State at home. So – Texas is going to be by far the best team that they played, the best uh, team in the trenches. Saturday's going to tell a lot with those two football teams, I think. 
Yeah, and just looking at Oklahoma, I mean, we're going to see if Venables is a somewhat decent coach here because I'm still yeah. not sold on him by any means. I'm kind of I'm a little more sold on Sarkeesian than I am Venables. Uh, I just think he's a brilliant defensive mind, and you know, if coordinators your ceiling, so be it. Uh, Which but way do you, you lean in that game, Rush? The Texas Oklahoma game. Yeah, probably Texas. I, I I think Texas probably in the close one. What's the spread in that game? Six and a half. Texas. Yeah, and it's that is a lot of points though. I know uh, it's and, probably right. maybe it's and right. It, it's a true neutral field. I mean, they literally that's a great thing about the Cotton Bowl and the Red River Shootout mm. is they they put it right down the middle, so it's literally it a cool. true neutral site. So yeah. it's one of the few neutral sites I like. But Oklahoma, so they both have a after Red River, they both have a uh, bye week, and then you're versus UCF, which Plumley could be back. If you're at Kansas, hopefully Jalen Daniels yeah. is back at Oklahoma State. Uh, you think Gundy's going to lose his last round of Bedlam? <laughs> um, then West Virginia, Garrett Green, revenge, baby. Get back out there at BYU, Provo, senior night, then versus TCU. I'm telling you, we could see Oklahoma lose Red River and it just go like this for them. I mean, basically, yep. in a way, happened. They got killed last year. Maybe that happens again this year. But I, I, I love when that game's good. What was it? The two years ago when Caleb Williams came in? Yeah, and Texas was four and one. And yeah. then they completely self imploded down the stretch. Yeah. They went finished five and seven. And we, I mean, we, we, we beat the, you know what, out of them in Morgantown to yeah. knock them out of a bowl game. So both teams after the Red River, the loser has self destructed the last two years. That's my prediction. And I think, yeah. it could, I think it's Oklahoma. Yeah. I, I think happen. Oklahoma. And then, I mean, Texas will, I mean, Texas can Texas, man. They, oh, they, Texas. Just, they, they love getting to that point where like, oh, we're good. And then they just, they just implode. They just yeah. assume because they're Texas, it's going to be right. And don't don't get me wrong. You you want to tell me that say Texas is kind of towards the end of the season, and if they get one more loss, they won't be in the Big Twelve championship. And there's a controversial play. You don't think a Big Twelve refs throwing that flag? <laughs> what do you mean? Your mark yeah. already has it already said. It. Like he's going to be like, you know, anything close here in this yeah. Texas. Texas Tech game. Oh, that looked like holding for every place holding. Just keep throwing the holding. So that's I, why it's going to be West Virginia K State in the final. Oh man, could you imagine? Yeah. We'd be should, great if that happens. We'll call it the Josh Eilert Bowl. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> be fantastic. Yeah, so. that would be good. But hey, it's possible, and it's what we talked. Well, especially you, Ryan. What you've talked about is if that's Kansas State, West Virginia. I mean, that's. It's a mirror looking at a mirror. I mean, that's oh, I that's two Physical just round and pound teams. Oh, that'll yeah. that'll be a. I mean, we've it seems like recently it's been a little. Yeah, it hasn't been great for West Virginia recently when we played them. But you know, when we were students here, and you know, um, I think Snyder was still the coach. Snyder I mean, owned us at the front end of the of the series, and then we and then we finally got going at the and end. And then we the we kind of strung them out for a bit. Yeah. We had a couple in a row where it was like it always seemed. Actually, we were talking about Red River, right? How usually the loser of that seems to go down and up. It kind of felt the same way. I could be wrong, but it just, it, at least it felt the same way as it did when we played Kansas State. No, I agree. And 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 Texas Tech. I mean, every year we've yeah. won the Texas Tech game, which we already did. We've won eight plus mm -hmm. games. So when we lose it, it's usually five or less. So we're getting, we're getting eight plus this year just based off of the Texas Tech game. Eight plus, baby. I love it. Eight and four. I love it. Make us eat crow, Ryan. Hey, I said hey, six. You said seven. Yeah. Well, good. We're wrong. I love it. I want to be eight, wrong. Let's eight. go eight. Let's go I, nine. I'd, Let's go ten. I'd be, di I'd be disappointed with eight at this point. Because that means you go 500, basically. I, I'm getting I greedy. We got we got to get nine at least. Let's get greedy. Get nine. A little bye week. Nine. A little bye week fun. But anyway, uh, Ryan to, and the rest of the audience on our show, the Ryan and Russ show tomorrow, we will be doing kind of uh, since it's a short week, right? We we got to kind of start our Houston content. We'll do a nice little Neil Brown versus Dana Holgerson, kind of our former coach versus our current coach, and just kind of go over their histories. Uh, have a little fun there, and then of course as well, we will be. I think it starts at six thirty tomorrow, Ryan, till eight thirty. I think it's about a two hours. We yeah, will be on the main channel uh, with Mark, uh, kind of discussing Neil Brown and and all he's done for coaching. I. I there'll there'll be other people from uh, West Virginia media in there as well, so we'll be kind of bouncing around, having having a good roundtable discussion there. So of course, check that out on the main channel. 
uh, and deservingly so that Neil Brown deserves a, I guess, a tribute episode for everything he's done this season. But of course, has to continue. Can't rest on your laurels. But everyone, enjoy your bye week, as they like to say, a little apple picking weekend. Uh, if you got some family events, good time to go get them done because, <laughs> hey, Thursday will come around quickly, especially on a short week. But hey, we're here every step of the way. Again, don't forget Wednesday nights, eight o'clock, the Ryan and Rush show. Uh, takes care of West Virginia Live, uh, part of the College Football Network. But don't forget to also check out the Wolfman, uh, 4 p.m. every day. And then he does the post games as well. Same thing here. Give, of course, a subscription. You subscribe to this channel and subscribe to the Ryan and Rush channel as well. We love you all. Enjoy your bye week. Thank you again for joining us. Love when the comments get going. And we'll see you all soon. Let's go, Mountaineers. See you guys.